Think of the internet as a house. And in that house, you have all of these different rooms that are connected via pipes. For the internet, think of those rooms as software tools and those pipes as the tool Zapier. Zapier is the pipes internet of the internet and it connects different software tools together so they can work together and more effectively. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a Zapier demo so you know what it is and how it can be helpful in connecting all the different software tools that you might be using. So let's get into Zapier and what it is. Now here is the homepage of Zapier once you've created an account and you are fully logged in. Now, before we actually get into the homepage of Zapier, what I wanna do is give you a quick rundown of the example we're gonna use in this Zapier demo. So in this one, what I'm gonna show you is, let's say you have a really simple email catcher with a Google form. Again, keeping it really simple, you can see there's name, there's email. And what I wanted to do is that every time there's a response in the Google form, I wanted to send a Slack message in this YouTube channel here in Slack. So let's go back to Zapier and you can see here in Zapier, you can see connect this app with this one. And there's all these different workflows. These are good examples. If, you, if, if this is your first time with Zapier, feel free to go into them. But for these examples, I'm not gonna use those recommended examples. So what I wanna do, again, we wanna get that Google form set up. So I click Google Forms and I'll go to Slack. Now every tool has different actions you can use in Zapier. I will say the more developed tools like Slack or Google Forms typically have more actions comparative to tools that are just joining Zapier for the first time. So tools like Notion don't have as many actions just yet, but I would assume those are coming as Notion's becoming more integrated with more of the different tools that are out there. Okay. Let's jump back into this workflow and let's see these different actions that are here for Google Forms. So you can see we want a new response every time there's a response there. And then for Slack, I want it so you can see all of these different actions. I'm gonna scroll down. And I want it to send a channel message. So we'll go to try it. And the nice thing about Zapier too is that they're really clear in the communication and how to actually use it. So again, if this is your first time using Zapier, the directions are pretty clear and obvious. So we'll get started. You have to connect, I've already pre-connected all of the different accounts for me. So you see the Google Forms account, I connected it there. I'll hit next. And then it's looking for the what, what spreadsheet is it? I will mention for Google Forms, a little bit of the weirdness with it is you have to have that spreadsheet, the, the Google Sheet spreadsheet created. So if you've just created the form but haven't created like that response spreadsheet that's connected to the Google Form, Zapier won't be able to find it. That's just a heads up and just a little bit of a bug or a little bit of a quirk with Zapier in this case. So I already created the email catcher response. I'll select that one, scroll all the way down to next. And then what I'll do is go to this. You have to pick which worksheet you want it to select from, which is, we only have one, so it's easy on that one. All right, so Google Forms is set up. Now, the other thing too is that as you go through the Zapier steps, it's looking for what data is there because it wants to be able to test the different actions that you're doing. So you want at least one data point as you're running these different automations. I've already pre-put information in. I put my name and my email in here um, in the Google Forms. That's what it's gonna pull from in this case. All right, so we have Google Forms set up. Now let's get into the Slack portion of it. And again, I've already pre-put a Slack in there, so that's connected. Now in this step, I need to tell it which channel I want it to send a message to. And again, we wanna send it to the YouTube channel in Slack. Okay, and then which fields do I wanna edit for that Slack message? As you can see, there's different areas. So again, we're keeping it really simple, but you could add attachments. You can you know schedule it for different times. Um, there's different ways, but in this case, all I want it to do is send a message, which is this message text. There's nothing else to send it as. So again, keeping it really simple. So we'll hit next, now that we've done that. And this is where it's really cool for the Slack part of it and the customization and the automation parts between Google Forms and Slack. They don't just have to be static messages. So for this case, I want it to have their first name, which is dynamic. So I'll put first name, that's like the, hey, this is like the information that we're, it is. So there's the first name. I'll hit next or hit enter here. And I want their email too in that Slack message. So I'll select email here. Now, as you can see, it puts this like Google Forms logo in the first name and then like the Google Forms logo in email. That's the dynamic data that's coming in. So let's say it is an email or the first name and email, you get a new response. It won't just be first name and email here. It'll actually be 
their real first name and their real email. So you will see what that data is. It's not just a static message, which is really nice. You don't have to like necessarily go into the Google form and that data to see who it actually was. That's the really powerful part about Zapier and connecting different apps so you can have these dynamic processes that fit your own workflows. Okay, so now that we have that, we'll go there. I'll hit next. And now that we actually have to test it. So you can see it's already pulled that, that sample data that I already have, which is Matthew at matthewstarstation.co. And let's send a test to see if it actually works. So let's send a test. All right, now a green mean is it was successful, but I'm gonna make sure in Slack that it's actually there. So we'll go to Slack and bam, there it is. You can see again, like I mentioned, there's the dynamic data right here and right there. So that's the first example that we use between Google Forms and Slack. Let's move on to the next example, which is still related to this Google Form. For this next example, I still wanna use this email catcher that we have in the Google Forms, except instead of sending that information to Slack, I want it to send it to a Google Doc template. So this template right here that you can see, it's really simple, but again, I just wanted to say this first name and their email. Now, again, we're keeping it super simple in this example as well, but you can see like if you're creating like maybe custom invoices or creating custom applications that you need to send out to different people, this is a really nice way to clean things up from the data part so it is shareable or sendable to other people. Let's go back to Zapier and let's connect Google Forms and Docs. So you'll see this, and then we have to pick again what the actions are. So select the trigger, a new response, just like it was in the previous example. And then I wanna create a document from a template because this template, this Google Doc temp is our template. So we'll do that, create the document from template, and let's try it. All right, get started. All right, and I've already pre-filled this information just like I have in the past, um, in the past example, so there's nothing to really go through. The, you know, we can skip through the more admin side of things. Now that we have the Google Form set up, let's go into connecting it to the Google Doc template. So we're getting the data from the Google Forms like we did in the past example. I've already pre-connected the Google Docs to, my, to Zapier. And I wanna select this email template in YouTube. So I'll hit next. And then you just select which fields do you wanna edit. I'm just gonna hit select all so you can see what those all those fields look like in this example. So I hit select all, I hit next. And you can see here, there's a few different options. I'll walk you through them. So new document name, you can give the documents a completely custom name. So let's say if, it's, if this is an invoice, maybe it's company name is the dynamic data, and then it's like an invoice from you know your company name. So for this, I'll just put first name, email catcher, just to keep it really simple. All right, folder, you can, the nice thing about this is you can actually put them all into one separate folder in your Google Drive. They don't have to be all disorganized within your drive. So you can create a new folder and put them there. For this example, I don't necessarily need to do that, so I'm not gonna do that. And then one of the other really powerful parts about this automation in particular is you can do the sharing preferences. So you can have them just view it, you can have them be able to edit this. So maybe it's like a beginner document and then maybe you wanna edit towards it. Maybe that's helpful for like content creation. But for this example, I'm just gonna put anyone can view. All right, and then unused field preferences. So let's say maybe you have a bunch of different fields that don't get answered. Maybe it's like a job application or application for your program that's, you know, has multiple different questions that depending on what they answer, it doesn't actually show them that question. You can set that, you know, those fields, maybe keep them or remove them. In this case, I'm only gonna, I'm gonna keep them because they're always gonna be there. It doesn't make a difference, but maybe it's really helpful for the more complicated parts of this particular automation. All right, and then you can see here is that you can see this first name here, that's the dynamic data, and there's the email. I will say here too, the only way Zapier is gonna be able to see those dynamic fields is actually bracketing that information. So you can see here in the email template, I have these brackets around first name and email. You wanna keep those because otherwise Zapier won't be able to put that dynamic data in those particular areas. Another little tip for this automation is not to put spaces in it. If you put spaces in it, Zapier can't find it typically. So just a heads up on this particular automation. All right, so now that we have everything, let's hit next and test this automation. So let's send test. There we go, you can see here, there is the custom name for the document and all that dynamic data that we put in, just the name and the email is there. Now, this is a simplified version of this automation, but it's a really powerful one, especially if you wanna share information 
from a place that maybe it's not so pretty and make it really shareable with a Google Doc link. The last thing I wanna point out about Zapier is their pricing model. Now, the nice thing about Zapier is that there is a pretty generous free plan. There's, you get up to five zaps and up to 100 tasks. So five zaps and 100 tasks gives you plenty of room just to play around with different automations and see how it can be helpful for your own workflows. This is gonna save you a ton of time and just save you from all those mundane tasks that you don't wanna do. So highly recommend at least playing around with it and seeing what tools that you might be using can connect with Zapier and how it might automate some of your workflows. There are literally thousands of tools that are connected to Zapier, so I highly recommend at least playing around with it using the free plan. And if it's really beneficial, you can always run them, see how it looks. And if it's working really well, you can keep using them. And if you're getting a lot of traction with your business, start paying for it. And honestly, the money, it's pretty affordable comparatively how much time it's saving. So this can be a great ROI if you're going to use Zapier and the priced plans. Now, if you want to check out more about Zapier, go to zapier.com and I'll put the link below.